Chapter two, Bob. Her brown hair is longer and her cheeks are less round, but I know it's her, Livy. She told me to wait here and I waited. Five years is a long time to hang out in the closet, but what else did I have going on? Not much, I'll tell you that. Here are some things I did while I waited for her to return. One, I counted to 987,654,321 six times. Two, I built a Lego pirate ship 63 times in the dark. Three, I played chess against a Lego pirate monkey and still lost most of the time. Four, I tried to do the hokey pokey like Libby, and ta Libby had taught me, but there's not much room to turn oneself around in this narrow closet without hitting the walls. Five, cried, but only once. Six, okay, twice, each day, but only for the first year. Seven, I meditated a few times after hearing Grand play a self-help tape on, on the benefits of calming the mind. This was actually not bad, even though my legs cramped from sit sitting cross-legged. Eight, I took a lot of naps, some lasting a few weeks at a time. Nine, I thought of all the reasons that might explain why Libby didn't come back for me. A, she was abducted by aliens, but I am not convinced aliens exist. Zombies? Yes. Other monsters? Probably. But aliens? Not sure. B, her family won the Saturday Lotto and went out on the world's longest world tour. If so, she could have stopped here to pick me up. I am small enough to fit in an overhead bin, and I do enjoy a nice salty peanut snack. C, she discovered an ancient mummy in Egypt and got busy giving interviews. But I think I would have heard Grand Nicholas talk about this on the phone. Grand is a loud talker, and I have excellent hearing. D, she got scared. But Libby is the bravest person I've ever met. E, she just didn't like me anymore. This is the one that led to me crying. But now she stands before me and she looks so sorry and surprised that it is hard to be mad at her. I still am, but less. You are all grown up, I say, letting the hand holding the Lego pirate swing behind my back. She flips her hair over one shoulder. Almost 11. You are a lot taller and your face is not as mushy. She reaches out a hand toward me, but then lets it fall back. I'm, I'm so sorry. You told me to wait for you in the closet. You said you'd be right back. She tilts her head at me, just like she used to before she, when she was trying to puzzle something out. Did I really say I'd be right back? I consider this. Well, you did say you'd see me soon. Five years isn't soon. It isn't even soon-ish. Libby looks at her feet. I can't remember anything, honestly. I do not reply. What can I say? All I did for five years was remember, and all she did was forget. I narrow my eyes at her. This is not easy because I don't actually have eyelids. I focus on looking skeptical and, non and nonplussed. I know words like skeptical and nonplussed, and a whole lot more because for 26 minutes each afternoon, a shaft of sunlight shines through the doorframe of the closet, and I read the dictionary. If I'd known about the light, I'd have gotten further than the TEs. She takes in my firm stance and my disapproving expression and my toes. Tapping on the carpet, I am laying on the guilt trip pretty heavy and then she rolls her eyes and puts her hands on her hips. I was five. We hold each other gazes until I sigh. She's right, of course. How can I blame her? She was this tiny slip of a girl, barely old enough to write her own name and tie her own shoes. I was 10 at the time, for the record, and I still am 10. I've always been 10 as far as I know. Still, Libby was the kind of five-year-old who could get things done. Wasn't it Libby who found me and saved me? Wasn't it Libby who made me the chicken suit and taught me to walk in it? Wasn't it Libby who promised she'd help me find my way home? Five years is a long time to wait, but if she could do all that when she was little, she must be able to do much more now. Maybe this time she will find my answers, and maybe this time she will get me home.